Hi, welcome back to the Chrono Talk channel. This is the first video of a series about materials used to make watches. Not only cases or bracelets, but everything that involves the watch, like crystals and movements. And in this video, I will talk about stainless steel. Keep watching. The stainless steel is a, it's a kind of a steel that is resistant to the corrosion or oxidation in most of the natural environments or environments created by man. And there are different kinds of stainless steel uh, to resist to different kind of environments or uses. In metallurgy, what characterizes a stainless steel as stainless is the presence of chromium in a content of at least 10.5%. And it's the chromium itself that makes the stainless steel to be resistant to corrosion because it's the chromium that permits the, the, the alloy to develop a very thin layer called passivation layer that is re responsible to cover the entire surface uh, and it makes uh, like a protective layer that prevents that all the oxidation and corrosion to go below the base of the of the material this layer is very very thin uh, it's even invisible uh, and that's why you can polish the stainless steel and it is still shiny even after the 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 layer forms because it's it, it forms almost instantly uh, if you scratch the stainless steel or you polish you actually remove the the, the passivation layer and even if you if you if you try to polish with a with a cloth you actually this gives a new shiny uh, appearance because you're actually removing that layer that is micro uh, micro scratched and you bring back the the layer right below it and in a few seconds the layer forms again and uh, the material is uh, completely protected and it's it's fast enough to prevent that any kind of other oxidation or stains and that's actually why in english it's called stainless steel because it it's not it's not even stains Okay. In other languages, you may you may listen to terms like inox steel or simply inox. For example, in Portuguese, which is my mother language, we call this simply as inox. Okay. But uh, in English, it's basically stainless steel because this 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 passivation layer is it forms quick enough to prevent even the slightest um, stain to form. There are three basic categories of stainless steels. I'm not going into much details over them because first of all I'm not a metallurgy expert and this is not the point of the video. Uh, the most common stainless steel used by industry is the 304 which is a classic 18-8 which means it, it's, it have uh, the classic proportion of chromium and nickel it's 18 percent of chromium and eight percent of nickel okay this is the classic stainless steel the problem of the nickel content on the stainless steel is that nickel is allergenic which means it can cause allergy to humans when in contact with uh, with the skin or other human tissues that's the reason why basically all the watches, almost all the watches, use uh, a stainless steel that is the grade 316L. This is, uh, this is considered a surgical grade steel because uh, it has a nickel release rate that is very low and it doesn't have the risk of causing allergies. 
So this is the kind of stainless steel that they use to surgical implants. Uh, of course, that today is not very common. Usually today they use titanium, which is even more uh, anti-allergenic than the, the steel. But the, for the contact with the skin, the 316 is still uh, okay for this purpose. There are international norms that determine what is uh, needed to uh, stainless steel to be surgical to be considered surgical the norm determines that the the nickel rate release have to be less than 0 0.5 micron of nickel per square centimeters of uh, skin over a period of a week i know this is these numbers are are puzzling uh, and it's difficult to imagine what they actually means, but there is a very specific norm to to tell that these this still is safe to be in contact with the human skin without the risk of causing allergies. Of course, that there are persons that are very susceptible to skin allergies, and they can have allergies because of the nickel even using the the 316l stainless steel um, this is very rare this is a, a very small percentage of the population that have this kind of allergy and they have no other option uh, other than using jewelry or watches that are made of gold or maybe titanium because the titanium is really really uh, almost hypoallergenic material one important thing here is that I see that some brands, they advertise their watches as being made of surgical steel because this, this makes a sensation that this is a very special kind of steel. Like, uh, you know, when you put surgical in a, in a sentence, it's like putting something like aeronautical or space age thing in a in a sentence this gives a a sensation that the 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 stuff is much better than it actually is so basically as i told you the surgical steel is is basically the the characteristic the characteristic of not releasing nickel in a certain rate to cause allergy it's no better in terms of uh, mechanical properties much the opposite it's actually uh is is not a very good uh still in the mechanical resistance to be very honest so that's why when brands say that their watch is made of surgical steel is actually nothing special because everybody that makes steel watches uh, uses surgical steel be it the most expensive steel watch in the world or the less expensive watch in the world it's all of them is the same 316L steel. Now there is one famous uh, exception to this, which is, as you probably guess it, Rolex. Rolex use a different kind of stainless steel, which is the 904L. Uh, it started using this kind of steel in 1985 on the Sea Dweller models. And in the mid 2000s, it's already using on every single stainless steel watch on, on the line. Um, this is a slightly controversial subject because there is a lot of misconceptions about why Rolex use this steel. Uh, I saw people saying that this is because it's more scratch resistance and that's that's even more difficult to machine and to produce and etc and as far as i know if you if you take the technical sheet of uh, big uh, steel producers in the world you you will see that the the hardness of the 316l and the 904l is basically more or less the same is it's, it's around 200 to 240 vikers vikers is the the unit used used to measure hardness on metals 
okay uh actually 200 to 250 or even 300 vikers is it's a relatively soft material okay the stainless is still used in watches is not very hard actually that's why your stainless steel watches are probably quite scratched right now so the, the the real reason why rolex uses the 904l is to prevent a very specific kind of corrosion which is that is called pitting corrosion it it actually um it actually causes very small pits on the metal uh, and it's caused by the concentration of uh, very corrosive materials on the very specific points i know that what probably comes to your mind when you think about rolex is luxury watches but actually for me and uh, a lot of other people what uh, what what comes to my mind when i think about rolex is two watches that are made for professional use and that's that's not a coincidence that rolex made one of the best diving watches ever which is the submariner and the and the sea dweller as well and there is no coincidence that this the use of the 904l comes exactly with the with a sea dweller because if you think that uh, a two watch for a dive a professional diver is, is, is he doesn't treat this watch like you probably do with your own modern rolex which is taking care of it uh like keeping it in a box very safe a professional diver probably he use his watch like a two he make what he have to do and just leave the watch there with all that salt and other kind of uh, material and organic material that starts to accumulate especially uh, on the lugs between the lugs or on the on the small space between the case and the case back and rolex realized that these watches uh, under se severe use they start creating those pitting corrosion points this happens especially if it happens uh near the 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 junction of the case back in the case this can this can lead to a water resistance problem in the future and i saw i really saw a lot of watches with this kind of problem uh, that are made with the uh, 316l steel and that's the that's why rolex decided to use this kind of steel to make it more resistance and to give the watch uh, to be more resistant to that kind of abuse of course that the 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 debate here or the the controversial side of this is if it makes sense to still use these on watches that are not even a, a dive watch um, yes I, I have to be honest that I, I, I didn't saw I never saw modern watches made from the 90s until today of course that I have to take into consideration that they are newer watches but I can remember seeing a modern watch with that kind of pitting corrosion because um, I think that the modern uh, alloys are more are purer than the alloys used on the 50s and 60s and 70s so I think the modern watches are more resistant uh, in other words the 316L of today is better than the 316L from the 60s um, so it's I'm not sure if it really makes a point to make uh, uh, a watch that is not uh, a two watch with this kind of material because it's more expensive but uh, i don't think this is actually important because i don't think a rolex is expensive because of that it's expensive because of other features okay so that's that's the the controversial side if it's it if if it makes sense to use this material on a watch that is not a two watch or even the modern sea dweller or submariner i am pretty sure that nobody uses these these watches 
as tools today. But anyway, uh, it's, it, it became kind of, uh, of a tradition of Rolex using this material. And of course, this, give, this gives you uh, more margin to the durability and the resistance of your watch. So I think it's, it's okay. But still, keep in mind that no other company today uses the 904L, as far as I remember. And nobody actually has problems with corrosion anymore with the modern 316L. So, basically, that's it. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new with this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, invite your friends, and keep watching. Thank you.